Hi, my name is Carter Kanak Sabasin, manager of the Jazz Jumpstart team, and I'm here to walk you through the Jazz licensing in 10 minutes. Some of the key features that we've introduced in Jazz Foundation 3.0, which is leveraged by Rational Team Concept 3.0, are as follows. First off, there aren't any server licenses. So unlike in the prior releases where you had various editions with specific user caps, they no longer exist. And you don't necessarily have to activate the servers anymore with a separate server activation key. The user thresholds are now bound by the backend database of your choice. So if you are using SQL Server, Oracle, or DB2, you have unlimited users. If you choose to deploy with Derby, then you're restricted to 10 users. From a client licensing perspective, nothing significant has changed. Uh, this old rules still apply when end users need to modify artifacts within Jazz, specifically when they're using Jazz products, they still require a license. From a read access standpoint, users who have uh, no licenses allocated to them, they can still read artifacts within projects in products like Rational Team Concert. But the catch there is that the project should allow that type of access and only then can users who don't have any licenses allocated but that can read will only be able to read changes in a particular project. From a license choice perspective is where we've actually made some changes in the client access license area. So besides authorized and floating that we already had in the prior releases, we've now introduced token licensing. Token licensing works based on a flex -LM strategy. So in this case, what we've introduced is an ex coexistence strategy with FlexLM. So when customers want to deploy a token licensing environment, they would need to deploy a FlexLM license server, which would host the token licenses, and the Jazz team server on which the Jazz products are, uh, are running would redirect all the token license calls directly to the FlexLM server. Based on these changes, we've also simplified some of the licensing concepts for Rational Team Concept 3.0. So besides, uh, besides just contributor and developer, we now provide stakeholder. And stakeholder is a more restricted, if you will, access to certain types of activities within the Jazz environment. Stakeholders in this case are folks that can collaborate with a larger team, they can view status and modify work items. Unlike contributors who can not only modify work items, but also modify plans, customize reports, and so on and so forth. Within the developer, we now have three categories. We have the regular developer, which allows a lot of capabilities that we've known come to know in the past. And we've also got developer for enterprise platforms, which now allows us to do, use capabilities for, specifically for teams that are doing mainframe or AS400 development. For developer for work groups, it's essentially a package. It's a 50 user author, 50 authorized user package that allows a team of 50 developers to work in a rational team concert environment. On the downloads page for rational team concert on jazz.net, you can choose to download rational team concert for the various platforms that you may have running in your environment. Subsequent to that, you can choose to implement the 10 free developer licenses that are available on jazz.net. What this would allow you to go do is to try out Rational Team Concert for a team of 10 users in your organization. These are perpetual licenses that you can use uh, for that particular team. So for our demo scenario, we're going to do the following. We'll have three developers, or three participants rather, uh, working in our environment where we have two developers, one in Europe, one in the US, and we have a stakeholder of the project that's participating with the development team out of Brazil. And what we'll do for the demo is assign each of those folks a license. Uh, developers, Terry and Allen, will be getting their uh, would be getting their floating licenses, and Carlos, the stakeholder, will be getting an authorized license. To add licenses to the Jazz Team server, we'll go to the Jazz Team server administration page, select the license key management link on the left hand panel, and we'll now see the license key management page. This page is now divided in three sections. We have the first section, which is the server information. And as you can observe, the row to activate the server is no longer there. The server comes activated. 
The second section is the client access license types. And this section here is primarily to add authorizers or licenses, just like we'll do in our scenario while adding a thousand stakeholder licenses. The third section is the floating license server. The token license service is also a type of floating license. So we configure either one of the other types of floating licenses in this section. So let's go ahead and add an authorized license. In this case, we'll choose to add our 1,000 stakeholder licenses and add our number for 1,000 users there. Select Next. Finish. Adding floating licenses is similar to the way we added the authorized user license here. So we'll click on Add again. Select our developer licenses. And we'll add 10 licenses there. Click Next. Select Terms and Finish. So now what we've done is basically added 1,000 stakeholder licenses and added 10 floating licenses. What I'm now going to do is go ahead and assign these licenses to the various users. So let's start with Alan. We'll go to Alan's user page and now Alan's been assigned a floating license. We'll click on Save. And also with Terry, we'll go ahead and add a license there for her as well. And for Carlos as well, we'll go ahead and add a stakeholder license for Carlos. Let's say save. So what we've done now is assigned users their respective licenses using the Jazz Team server. One of the advantages of using floating licensing is the capability to run reports on the Jazz Team server for its usage. So in this example, we're going to just run a report on uh, some developer token licenses and see the kind of usage that we've had for these particular licenses between November 1st to December 3rd. So we'll click on Show Reports and pleasantly inform that we haven't had any license denials. And we can start seeing a trend. And as you can see, between the end of October till around the middle of November, there's a, a set of significant set of activities going on, and after which it kind of uh, mellows down a little bit. We can take a more granular look on the usage pattern for these token licenses on an hour by hour basis. And as you can see, there's a strong trend going from 9 a.m. in the morning till around 5 p.m. after which there's a downward trend on the usage of these developer licenses. Let's look at a different a report uh, for contributor. In this case, these are a little different uh, for floating license. These are, again, native jazz floating licenses versus token licenses. And let's look at how we perform in the contributor area. And as you can see, uh, we've got a lot of contributor licenses here, and we're nowhere near the threshold to actually max it out. Uh, and in this case, from an hour by hour comparison perspective, we actually don't see uh, any predictable pattern. As a matter of fact, it just has peaks and valleys uh, at any time during the day. Uh, but we don't necessarily see a lot of activity happening around 7 p.m. Eastern to around 11 p.m. Eastern in this case. For token licensing, we actually have a tech note available on jazz.net that highlights how to add uh, token licensing into the Jazz Team server. Uh, just like I showed you earlier where we loaded up the floating licenses, just in the same section, we add in a key on the Jazz Team server for the token license that you want to go ahead and use the additional step that you have is you have to specify the port number and the host name for the uh, FlexLM server that's hosting the licenses. And in this case, once that's set up, you can again, as I showed you earlier, you can run reports on the usage of these token licenses and uh, proceed with your day-to-day -day operation with the Jazz product that you're currently using. Additional capabilities of the Jazz Team server in Rational Team Concept 3.0 include the capability to serve floating licenses of products built on Jazz Foundation 1002. This allows products like uh, Rational Requirements Composer floating licenses to be served through the same server. The benefits of this 
are the capability to be able to consolidate floating licenses to a single server for multiple products. For more details on Jazz licensing, please refer to the following articles.